Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's the end of another week at City Hall, and as I do each and every week, I come to you with some information about the week that's just passed, and I uh, look forward to see what uh, could be happening in the week to come. Um, again, I just want to remind everyone who uh, does have the opportunity to come to City Hall for uh, some business uh, that we are continuing to use face coverings when you are uh, conducting your business or visiting here at City Hall. Uh, that is for the protection not only of the public, but also of our staff and the folks who work here at City Hall. So please, um, if you are coming to City Hall, please City remember Hall bring for, a face covering with you. Uh, or visiting here at City Hall. Event, someone has forgotten, have a limited number of uh, face coverings we can provide uh, for you. But please um, remember that as we continue to go through uh, what I hope are the final stages uh, of the um, pandemic and the need to make sure that we're all very careful with our public health requirements. Uh, the latest information on the <clears throat> opening of the border seems to indicate that um, the Canadian government uh, and the uh, American government are talking about the possibility of opening the border uh, in a limited capacity uh, sometime in August, uh, I believe, with regard to fully vaccinated individuals. I think much like we've experienced here in uh, New York State, this will be a phased uh, process where they will, um, both federal governments will continue uh, to expand uh, the number of uh, accepted travelers uh, that will be able to uh, go back and forth across the border. So we're looking forward uh, to that moment. Uh, clearly there are many of us uh, that may have family and or property uh, that we would like to be able to uh, visit or get to. Um, as well as just enjoying the free flow uh, of commerce and opportunities on both sides of the border. So stay tuned for more information uh, on that. As I indicated um, last week, uh, we continue to look for high school juniors and high school seniors who are interested in working at the two city splash pads, the one at Center Avenue and the one at Hyde Park. Uh, if you are interested, please contact the executive office at 286-4320. All of the particulars uh, for the number of days that will be worked and the number of hours, um, as well as the rate of pay, will be provided in that conversation. We're looking for, again, high school juniors and high school seniors who would like to work for a few weeks in the summer. Um, we continue with road work, uh, repaving efforts um, in the city. Uh, most of the roads that have been selected are those that would be eligible for reimbursement at the state and federal level. And so we've announced some additional streets, um, 8th Street, Cedar Avenue, Spruce, Elmwood, a few others. Please check our social media pages uh, for uh, the full listing, as well as our continued information on the process uh, that uh, we will be handling each of these roads. And it comes in phases, and so there's an initial phase um, of removing the old top. Uh, the next phase would be putting down the initial layer and then finally finishing it off. So it's, it, it happens uh, through a, uh, as I say, a series of phases. Please check our social media pages uh, for an ongoing and continuing listing. Um, we will um, continue our efforts on 9th Street from Pine Avenue to Niagara Street with road work uh, beginning today. Um, it's scheduled to be completed by Tuesday of next week. Uh, of course, that's weather permitting. And again, continue to um, watch our um, uh, social media pages for further information. Um, again, Food Truck Thursdays continue. Uh, they will continue again next Thursday on the 22nd and will feature uh, the Food Truck Mother Cluckers. If you haven't been down to the train station for Food Truck Thursdays, please um, do yourself a favor and get down there. It's every Thursday uh, through next month from 11 in the morning until 1.30. Uh, there's great food, um, folks uh, visiting with one another, uh, as well as music. Uh, depending upon our ability to get some entertainment down there. So it's really a, it's a good time in the afternoon if you have a lunch break and you want to get outside and enjoy some good food and uh, a good atmosphere. Um, next week, we, uh, July 20th, we are scheduled uh, to make a little bit of history, and that is to have the first skydive over the falls, which will occur uh, on the evening of July 20th. Uh, we have uh, Italian supermodel Roberta Mancino who will be uh, coming 
landing into uh, the um, area on 3rd and Niagara after having um, skydived in from uh, the falls. Uh, more information on that will be coming throughout the weekend, uh, but we, um, this has never been done before. And so once again, as we did a few years back with um, the Nick Walenda event, again, Niagara Falls um, is gonna provide a very exciting opportunity for uh, those who want to come down and view this historic opportunity and event. Um, we want to thank uh, United States it's, it's Senator, awesome. Majority Leader, and our representative from New York, okay. uh, Chuck Schumer, uh, for his efforts in moving forward uh, the child tax. Good evening, Niagara Falls. Thank you back to another episode of Niagara Graffiti. This is your host, Sean Levick. And here with my buddy, Tim Heater. Hey, guys. Hope you enjoyed the mayor's uh, Friday message that was put out. Yeah, we figured we'd start with that and go ahead and, you know, nitpick at it just a little bit. What do you think, Tim? Well, uh, one of the things that I, I found interesting in there, and uh, I, I hope that they follow through, is uh, the mayor was talking about doing the streets, saying that they're going to come in and uh, zip the streets, and then they got to come in and put down the uh, Put down the base underneath of it and then do the top. I'm, Ashland Avenue is uh, a street that's near and dear to me. Obviously, that's where I live. And I know that a couple of years ago, we had a garbage truck go through the street. Uh, the street was never repaved. They just kind of patched it. And it's like a roller coaster. And I know in front of my neighbor's house, there's a sinkhole big enough to be an in-ground swimming pool. And um, you see, I, see, I hope they're not going to try and just put a blanket over that pothole. And you've seen all the other streets that were out there. Oh. Just what was it yesterday? Yeah, we we <laughs> we had a few uh, rivers running down those streets. <laughs> rivers, damn Great Lakes going <laughs> we, on. And we didn't have any lifeguards on duty either. Yeah, I said, I said we needed to put Earl Bass <laughs> over there, and play Captain Save a Ho. I know there um, were uh, there were several people that had issues with their basements filling up and stuff. And, uh, you know, we got to give kudos to the water department because, I mean, they're doing the best they can with a, a very old um, water treatment plant that we know is in need of replacement. Um, they, they kept uh, the water moving, and I, I don't know about most areas in the city. I know the area where I was at, uh, it was cleared out. Uh, the water was down, the level was down within, you know, two to three hours. So. Yeah, ours was pretty clear. We, we stayed pretty clear, too. And that, that was that was another thing that I wanted to go into about the whole, because the $57 million is coming in is supposed to help with infrastructure and repair. But this is an ongoing issue that we have. I mean, what was it, two, three years ago, we had shit going into the into the river Well, there, because it was overflowing the system itself. That's a designed part of the operation for the water treatment plant. I know yesterday they, they were very close to having to shut down from from what I was told and uh, I mean th that only happens if they have to do it in order to save the water treatment plant so that we don't lose the whole plant yeah um, that but that is part of the, the the plan that they have in place I mean the EPA I believe has actually cleared that but I mean that's only in what we had yesterday we had a severe case of somebody just dumping <laughs> dumping the water all over us so you know, we, we had to do that. And, you know, unfortunately, we we could have put a couple of hydroelectric plants mm -hmm. in some of the streets and, and harnessed that. We definitely could uh, have. Such as, um, you know, harnessed electricity, which is uh, one of the things we need to talk about with uh, Mr. Nicholas Tesla. I mean, he... Uh, the father of electricity. I yeah. mean, that man could have uh, probably made us money off of that water that was going down our streets yesterday. Well, he definitely, from what I from what I understand, he was such a fanatical person. His OCD would have probably came up with a a good way to at least solve the issue. Um, you know, I, I I was just I'm going to interrupt you for a second. I I was seeing on uh, Canadian TV. I, I do catch Canadian channels, and and I see they do one hell of a celebration over there for Nicholas Tesla. Why, why don't we? Yeah, and I've I've often wondered that. Uh, not that long ago, Seth did a, a STEM birthday. His, Tesla's birthday is, is uh, July July tenth. Yes, and um, the last thing that I noticed is they had that STEM birthday down at High Park, and that was a great idea. And I agree. You know, the Hamilton is a is a big. They, they love Tesla and Hamilton. Absolutely. That's part of their history. They they accept and they embrace their well, history. You, you can't even go you can't even go near the falls, the horseshoe falls on that side without coming across that huge 
statue. Now, the statue that we have is technically the oldest statue of Tesla in North America, on the North American continent. And it was a gift from us for a bicentennial from the people of Yugoslavia. And, um, which and is where he's from. what do we do with it? Where is it he's, located He's tucked away next to Luna Falls, which is, and we could have got that statue. That statue could have been where that monstrosity of a. Oh, are you referring to the artwork? That, that they wonderful, call it? What, it, what is it called? The Falls <coughs> Reunited. I don't know what exactly they the, made it. But the one there in the circle drive, that was actually for uh, the treaty between. Um, Canada, the United US States. and Canada. Yeah, International Peace Treaty. Yes. And, which um, doesn't make sense because. Well, it, it unless you actually can talk to some people first off, to, in order to get over to read the plaque on it, you got to cross through the Circle Drive, and on a busy weekend, on a holiday weekend, yeah, you're not doing it. You're not getting over there, so they they kind of uh, missed the mark, I think, on the well, location. The thing about the the Tesla statue is we 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 paid probably what six hundred and twenty five thousand dollars to have that to relocate it. Well, the statue, no, the statue that we have there now. Causes. Oh, yes, yeah. Well, we had that. That was the, the artist fee, and then we had uh, the issues afterwards. They found well, out where the utilities had to be relocated. Utility relocation. The, the, the actual artist himself, that's not the first time that that statue's been done. There's a better version of that yes. exact same statue in Myrtle Beach. Yes. Or, uh, no, excuse me, Virginia Beach. It's called The Wave. <laughs> and it only cost them three hundred thousand dollars. Well, the welcome to Niagara Falls. That's a tourist district, so we know how the tourist district but is. I mean, it's a little higher down there. The Tesla statue was actually valued at five hundred thousand dollars, and the state offered to move it to that location for us for free. But and and they, they didn't take advantage of it. Well, and that that runs into what what my whole petition about Tesla is is that um I want to rename a street after Nikola Tesla. I don't think that's a bad idea. I, I mean, I, that's our heritage. Right I wanted here. to go crazy, and I wanted the name Pine Avenue, Tesla Way, a Tesla Way, or name Main Street Tesla Boulevard, Nikola Tesla Boulevard, and uh, I mean, there's 86 signatures on it. Well, you know, hopefully, I'll, I'll get up and talk to our buddy Kenny. I can tell you who one of those signatures are. One of them on there's mine. And one, I think Peter signed it, and we're gonna make Dustin sign it back there, saying that you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, now is Dustin old enough to legally sign anything like that? We got to make sure we don't break any laws. He just ate that sub from uh, Maloney's. Oh so. man, that, that that place is awesome. I got uh, two. I got three Pepsi's. I'm happy with that. I'm happy well, with my you, three Pepsi's. Chantal Maloney. If nobody knows who she is, she has Maloney's Deli and Sub. She's over here on Buffalo Avenue, down by uh, Joey's Pizza. She's actually right across from from where we're sitting at right now. And I went over and had the sausage sub, and man, that thing is just. Phenomenal, and you know, here she is. She's got a friend of mine's daughter working in there, helping her out. Um, she's a woman-owned business, doing her thing. It's uh, Maloney's her last name, obviously. She named it after herself. And um, we, uh, I think, we actually got a little short video when we went over there to uh, introduce ourselves and uh, to get some some food and stuff. Yep. And uh, let's go ahead and play that, Dustin. Cute up, Dustin. It's a nice little place. It's very clean. It's a very very clean little place. And it's just a super nice lady in there. I mean, right. Chantel was very good. Yeah, any questions? I mean, she could tell you everything that's on the menu. Obviously, I'm sure she created that menu. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's uh, that's Miss Chantel there in the green shirt. And there, there's our uh, producer, Dustin. And then we've got Miss Kylie back in the back. Hey, du hey Dustin, how, how was that turkey sub? What did you think of turkey sub, Dustin? Better than Subway. Better than Subway. That a boy. See, there is things better than eating fresh. Look at that. She's got a she's got a very nice clean kitchen. She uh, very clean. I asked her if anything was included with that place. She actually provided all the, the equipment and everything in there for herself. Said she had to put up all the walls and, and the hoods and everything like that. And yeah, hood work can cost too, because there's places that'll charge you up to ten thousand dollars to install a hood. Well that's that's your area of expertise. Yeah, well I, I should have went to school for age vac and I'd probably made more than I do cooking or yeah. anything. But Yeah, but you probably wouldn't have been as happy. Not as I wouldn't either. have been as fat. That's for damn <laughs> That's sure. It, right Definitely there. wouldn't have been as fat. <laughs> but yeah, that, Maloney's. It, it was really nice and clean in there, and that's one big component for me. That's that's, that's a major thing behind any restaurant. Because I tell you, there's some restaurants here that I, I won't go back into. <laughs> I well, went. I, my my first thing is, is if I go to a place and I got a bathroom, I go into the bathroom and check and see the cleanliness. Because if it's not if it's not a cleanly cut bathroom, somebody's not checking it regularly. Probably pissing probably on your like, food. Probably not taking care of the kitchen very well either. Yeah, and, and that, that's that's a problem. But she is a, a locally woman, local, mm -hmm. lives here in Niagara Falls, and uh, she's uh, she's 
raising her family, started her own deli, makes really good sub. I'm telling you, I'd definitely be back over there to get another sub. If- I'm going to have to try it out. I'm going to have to grab something from there. Definitely. We're here Fridays. We'll have to stop yeah. on Fridays and see her. I'll have to bring Jackson over there. Next week, we're going to try to sneak him in here and see if he can sit down long enough. If y'all haven't noticed, there's no little monster <laughs> bobbing behind me. <laughs> He'll be back, though. He will. He's going to be you, right you guys will get flipped off next week, I promise. <laughs> yeah, Jackson's a good kid, though. You're raising him right. He well, can't, you can't really complain a whole lot about him. One thing about him, though, is, and, and I wish, and it's something that when I move back up here that I, I promised my kids, because it's something that I grew up with. And this is another thing that I've been talking about since moving back up here because it's something that automatically I noticed off gate. The absence of the Festival of Lights. Yes. Now, not that long ago, it was probably about four years ago, I started the petition for that too because I, I thought that, that there's great economic and psychological benefits from having that here. Sure. You know, we can go over those. You know, I don't, what I don't understand is how City Hall hasn't seen it as a major economic standpoint to help some of these small businesses. We, what is small business month november i mean yes i think <laughs> october november i know it's, it's, it's november because i remember Dyster made a point of it and i laughed about it because like yeah but we can't call it small business month without actually giving them like some hand- kind of incentive to get people down there to to patronize a small business. well there, there's one thing about business owners that i've always learned that i've I'm dealing with plenty of business owners i've learned that they don't want to hand out a lot of business owners have busted their ass to get what they want. But if you give them incentive and a hand up, like creating the, uh, recreating the Festival of Lights, not just down at the falls. You know, that, that's the state shit. We could talk to the state about, hey, you know, work with Disney and see if you can redo it. You know, that would be a great way to bridge the United States and Canada way better than that bullshit statue that we got. <laughs> I mean, because I remember as a kid, there really wasn't too much that you couldn't you couldn't differentiate between Canada and the United States back then. Mm. You'd walk through the old Fall Street, you get to see all the little man, you know, the little animatronics and waving, and I could build them. And if I could build them, I know we got a bunch of other parents out here that could build them. Even just people that live in the community that that can contribute. That's something that can be a community effort. Absolutely, you know, with asset based community development, but. I think if they started looking back towards them kind of things that. Well, we also lost the lights that were in uh, out at uh, Hyde Park. You used to be able to drive through and see all the light displays and stuff like that. Those are also gone. Yeah. And, and I remember that got me kicked off of um, <laughs> Niagara Uncensored page because someone tried to tell me that was traditional. It was only like a couple years old. But even that, and, and that was another thing too, because my idea went way past the state park. If you create something where it's where you're creating different events at different locations, they want to put an ice rink down at the falls every damn year. Yes. We got an ice rink at High Park. We do. But they were looking now that was one of the things I was actually getting into because I had suggested to them that we need to put that over on the tennis courts, right? Beside High Park Ice Rink. Mm-hmm. Because the whole idea was to get people to be able to skate outside. You go down to New York City. You can get into the York Rockefeller City Center. And you can yeah. skate outside. People it was it was not just about skating. It was about the environment, the ambiance of it being outside. Well, it, and it creates that. You know, at, at Hyde Park Ice Rink, they've got, obviously, they've got skate rentals in there. Mm-hmm. They've got the bathrooms there. They've got the snack bar in there. They could have, you know, hot chocolate, coffee. Well, go in and warm up. Go in and use the restroom. Get your skates there. It was all right there. And there's plenty of parking there. We had the one, I remember we had it downtown a couple of years ago. They had a mobile rink, mobile oh, cooling yeah, unit brought yeah. in, and um, I think it turned out to be a, a big bust. Mm-hmm. Even when Smoke and Joe had, uh, you know, the the snow tube park there, yeah. they tried with the, the synthetic ice that didn't work. Then they went to the roller. Well, you can't, you got to use a real thing. You, it, you do. You really do got to use a real thing because that also adds to the to the ambiance of it. You know the sure the experience. Now living in North Carolina, up in the mountains, it was definitely like a ski area, <laughs> major ski area, and. Um, you could literally drive by every morning and watch them making fresh snow. Yes. You know, snow guns were going. Snow guns were just blowing. They and do that in Ellicottville. I like when yeah. I go down to go hunting in November, I, I drive through Ellicottville, and the, you see the snow guns just a blast. It's like, and, man, that would be that would be cool to have one of those instead of a bubble machine, wouldn't it? Oh. In, the, in the summertime, you could be blasting snow. and I want a bigger <laughs> bubble machine. Like I've been checking them out because I don't went through two of them. You know, I'm down to one bubble machine. I was wondering why the bubbles were a little thin. I yeah, thought maybe yeah. you were running out of bubbles or well, something. The company that I got them from is called The Toy Company. Mm-hmm. T-H-E-E 
fun, the fun company. And uh, I actually went on and looked, and I'm sorry, I got a halls in my mouth. I'm chewing it. <laughs> but they got the the only thing that busted on them was the thing that, that revolves the actual bubble wands. Oh, the wands. rotating wands themselves? Yeah, so I, I can go on there and order four. And I'm just going to order four and just replace them as I need them, you know. <laughs> and that's pretty sad when your bubble cannon wears out and you got to start replacing parts on it. Oh, I'm over there putting up books against the screen because the less air it comes in, the more bubbles that come out, I notice. But I'm thinking I'm going to burn the fan out sooner or later. But see, even that, that that's similar to the Festival of Lights. That's something that's like a quirk that's that's in that area. And yeah. people go down there when they when they start hearing about it. They're like, what do you mean? Some some crazy guy's blowing bubbles out his window? Well, and I got people that drive by looking for it. Absolutely. You know? And, and, I, and I, then I, causing accidents. Probably. Well, and, <laughs> well, there's been times where I, I've posted a picture, like when that accident actually happened. Yeah. Um, I posted a picture from my window of the accident, you know, looking down, because I'm up on the third floor, so I got the whole view. And people started noticing, are you that guy that blows the bubbles out of his window? <laughs> All like, of a sudden, the bubble floats the up like, into your camera screen. <laughs> am I am I under oath here? Like, I plead the fifth. And that, you know, was definitely a fun experience. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some more, though. i got to fix them. <laughs> but it, and it's small things like that that create a sense of community that get people to want to do things. In it's the something different. It's something mm-hmm. to get people's attention off of the normal. Oh my gosh, we got shootings every day. We got muggings mm-hmm. every day. We got all this crime. Uh, let's give a shout out to Lori Pello. I see Miss Pello's watching us here on uh, Facebook. Let well, we say hi to Lori, and uh, we got Chantel Lee. Looky there, Chantel's even on here. Thank you for the sub, Chantel. It was very good. He 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 smashed that whole thing in less than twenty minutes. Dude, this one, I didn't eat know. lunch today at work. All right, I was hungry. It's you don't starve the fat guy. But uh, if anybody wants to call in, our numbers there on the screen seven one six nine nine zero three nine three four. Go ahead and feel free to call in. You got something on your mind? Something you want to talk about? Something you want us to talk about? Shoot us a message. Hey, guys. I, speaking hey, of Lori. fat guys, <laughs> because I am pleasantly plump. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, I was, Melissa went shopping, okay? Oh, no. And, yes, my girlfriend has a terrible, terrible <laughs> shopping. She's a shopaholic. I got more food probably in my house than Walmart. Well, but we're, but we're, she, she's feeding three growing boys, you know, me. Oh. And the, and the twins two. come over. And <clears throat> and then we got her daughter, Michaela, my stepdaughter. So on, on any given weekend, we could have six kids in the house, which is, you know, five kids, which is wild. <laughs> um, but I, I went through and I'm thinking, you know, she got like chicken fingers and stuff like that. The price of this meat is astronomical it and is. it's only rising higher and higher. I don't know if you've seen where Listen. JBS got hacked again <laughs> last week for a ransomware, a ransomware attack. And I think it was $41 million. The <sighs> ransom was for, well, I don't know why your chicken wings are going up. Well, that's another thing that I'd like to talk about is urban chickens. What is your thought on urban chickens? You know something? I don't know a lot of people that don't really like eggs. I personally do. I am one of the lucky ones that I have a very good friend that uh, has chickens. He's allowed to have chickens. He lives over on Grand Island, okay. and they're allowed to have chickens. I went with him to uh, to pick them up, and he actually had an incident where he had a, a weasel got in there and, and killed all his chickens, oh, so we had to start over. We they'll do damage. 12 more that are over there, and anytime I need eggs, I go over and get eggs. And I'll tell you, the the taste of a fresh egg compared to what you can buy in the store is like night and Completely day. Completely different, yeah, definitely. And, you know, I just, I I like eggs. Why why do I have to go to the store and buy eggs if I can grow chickens? Because not only can you eat the eggs, but when the chickens make you mad, you can just have yourself chicken. Yeah, and they're they're fun to when you, when you have them that way too. You just chop their heads off and. And they're actually and they're they're not. Uh, some people think, oh, that's a barnyard animal. They're dirty. They're and actually not very dirty. They're not. They're very clean. Well, pigs are very clean too. We, yes. we force them to live the way that they live. Right. I lived on a pig farm. <laughs> I, I was actually looking at the paperwork earlier from when I was placed in a voice home, and one of the voice homes I was in for like two years was a pig was on a pig farm in Bath, New York. They won't eat shoes. Well, or false teeth. No, and they're, they're very, very clean if you keep them, if you allow them to be clean. They're very OCD type animals. But from living on a pig farm is why I don't eat pork. <laughs> and, um, well, 
Uh, but I, I, I do think there was a point in time two years ago mm-hmm. where this was up at city council talking about it was urban one of chickens. the topics where they were, uh, they were having a debate on it at city hall in one of the council meetings. And, uh, I personally think that, uh, you can have eggs from a chicken without mm-hmm. having a rooster. Yeah. And the rooster is the noisy. Yeah. The rooster is the one that, that makes the neighbors mad. The chickens, I mean, they, they go around, they peck the ground, they're looking for worms, they're eating insects. They're, they're, they're clean animals and they produce eggs, eggs we eat. It, well, and a lot of things that we eat, I mean, just them and themselves and with the price of everything going up, it would be phenomenal to have, be able to go out and pick your own eggs up and, and not have to worry about the expense or, you know, if the, the market crashes or anything you know, like that and, as well. And, and the long-term benefits of, of being able to raise them and, and have that kind of food, you know, well, but, um. That's uh, that's one of the things though that um, I, I would had read a couple of books about the the old pioneers, old time pioneers, and, and I mean, what happens in a, in a grid down situation or when we have a food shortage, you you have people that they, they say teach your kids to grow a garden. Why can't you teach your kids how to take care of chickens? Well, and uh, yeah, definitely, and I, I agree with that because it, I, I I I'm trying to teach Jackson how to do a garden for that that reason, you know, just to. Not so much because I'm. A, I believe that the Armageddon is going to happen tomorrow, which I believe that it's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> um, I, I do. I kind of have this feeling that. But it's a life skill that it, that should something and, happen. And when it's we're very not important. Here. Well, it, and it's not even something that that it's something that we can control. We could have something as small as a solar flare knock out the entire grid, and people are going to be going crazy because they don't. They they find out that chickens ain't committing suicide. <laughs> um, what do you What do you mean? Chickens don't grow in the grocery store. That's where I always bought my chicken. That's it was at the grocery store. I've never seen oh no God. chicken with feathers. We're gonna die! Oh God! But you know, and, and it's not so much even for like a grid down or an Armageddon. It's also, you know, if you're low income and you can afford to raise yeah. a chicken, you know, they're not that expensive, and they they're like the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, they keep laying eggs. Well, and it's just like anything else. We don't we don't teach kids how to fish no more. I don't know a lot of kids that go. I mean, there there are some. I can't say I don't know. I don't. Obviously, I said that I've never taken my kids fishing. That well, but, we're going to change that because now that uh, Tim's working on getting his vehicle stuff, and Tim's getting ready to uncover the boat, and Tim's going to take Sean and Jackson out. We're going out. We fishing. just we just bought the we just bought Jackson a tackle box fishing pole stuff like that. He's been wanting to, and and I think it's because I'm trying to teach him these things. Mm-hmm. Um, midlife crisis type scenario. When's your Corvette coming in? Oh man, <laughs> I would never drive a Corvette. I'll tell you, I there there was a friend of mine. Not again, anyways. She uh, she's a city employee, and she bought her husband when the Catholic Charities was giving away a Corvette. They had a raffle, and she bought her husband two tickets for his birthday. Mm. And that lucky man won a 2021 Corvette. Christ Almighty! The cost of the tickets was very reasonable, uh, two hundred dollars. That's not bad at all. With, but he's got to pay the taxes on it, though. I think it was eighty nine or ninety eight thousand dollar car. Yeah, they had to pay the taxes on it, obviously. Yeah. But let me ask you something: If somebody says, "Hey, I'm going to give you a 2021 Corvette that you can't even go to a dealership and buy right now," we're going to yeah. give it to you for for the cost of uh, the taxes and the two hundred dollars for the yeah. tickets that you bought. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah. I'll yeah. take two. I'll take three if you've got. Them. And I'll tell you, man, that is that, a that sharp would be me. car. Oh yeah, they're they're beasty. I, but yeah. I like the older cars. I'm definitely an muscle <coughs> car kind of guy. You know, like oh. I think I think the car that cost me my license the last time, the only time, <laughs> the only time was um a '73 Corvette Stingray. No. And uh, well. My brother cost me, in all honesty, waving at cops as we drove by him. <laughs> like a complete jackass. But Speaking of old cars, though, I'm actually going on <clears throat> Sunday. I'm going to take on a road trip to uh, Rochester. I found a car that when I first came home from the Marine Corps back in 1992, I went and bought myself a convertible Geo Metro. Go ahead and laugh all you want. Well, it's like looking at the car and looking at you. I wasn't all right. I wasn't the Chunkendales guy that I am now back then. But it's a two seater, three cylinder. You know what? I had a lot of fun in that car, but unfortunately I I shouldn't say unfortunately. Fortunately I had children. 
and there was no room for a car seat, so I, I had to let that go. That was one of the sacrifices I made for my children. And um, now here I sit with uh, no car seats needed, mm-hmm. so now I can actually go. And I found one. Well, you you got your you got your Camaro too. I, I do. That's that's actually that was my son's first car. Oh, okay. I won't get rid of that other than to him because I saw the look on his face when I flew into North Carolina while he was in the Marine Corps. And we walked out of the airport, and he says, Dad, what do you think of my ride? And there sits this 95 convertible Camaro. And I'm mm. like, the kid's got a grin from ear to ear. Yeah. My first car was a 79 Camaro. And I had to let mine go because it was a race car, and I couldn't afford a race car in a family. So I had to actually let that car go. And I, I remember the, the feeling that I had when I let that car go. And I know my son had the same feeling when he let this Camaro go, and I will not let him try to have to look for this car when he gets to be my age. So I have that car, and that car will go back to him. But this little convertible Geo Metro was my, it was the first new car that I actually bought. And I'm telling you, I had so much fun in that car, 50 miles a gallon. For as old as it is, it is. It has a nice, nice body on it. It is you know, very, really... very clean. And, you know, it's 29 years old. Yeah. And I don't care if it needs an engine. I don't care if it needs a transmission. As long as the body's good, I will put the money into that because that's it's something that's got sentimental value to me. Yeah. I call that bold talk for a one-eyed fat man. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, uh, that's basically what happens when you get old. You know, not old, older. You start to see things that, you you know, your nostalgic factor comes yes. into play and you want it. And that's that's exactly the reason why we have, like, the price of comic books and, and certain toys are so high because, you know, those are the toys that we're trying to recapture our childhood. Man, with. the toys. He, do you ever see a metal Tonka truck in the dang Walmart? No, I, I didn't get in the toys. I like remember that. when I was a kid, there was those things, even though I was a bigger kid, not as big as I am now, but I remember sitting on those things and, and my sister and my dad pushing me around that thing. You if, sit on one of these toys, these kids get. Are if you flash an Atari to 2600 with. to me, then yeah, or a Super Nintendo, then I'm like, oh, I remember, yeah, I want to play that now. But when we get out of here, I'm going to take you to my house because oh, I'm going gonna, gonna to tell you, I, I honestly have both of those. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I still have. <laughs> have both of those the kids didn't want them because they wanted a playstation 14 and an xbox 4 million because well, they got internet capacity and everything else you know jackson's got the xbox one and we've had it for probably two and a half years i think i've played it maybe two and a half times <laughs> and that was three times too many right yeah, yeah like <laughs> it, it, we just sit there we'll play mortal kombat and i'm like all right dude like you know I'll kill you real quick and do a fatality on him and then i want to go back to watching youtube videos of politics well we got a we got an online comment here from uh miss Pello. She, uh, she says, I don't know enough about chickens, but off the top of my head, I'd say not in the city. We need to get control of the ordinances that exist now before adding anything new. Owners here can't take care of their grass, garbage, children, or pets already. And you know what? She, she makes a good point. We, yeah. we do have some, uh, some people that don't take as much pride in their, their yard, their well, you houses. Gotta, you got to find sure. their niche, too. Right. In a lot of yeah. ways, it's a niche for some people. It's not for everybody. Yeah. It's definitely not something. I mean, just like it's just like owning a dog. A dog is not for everybody. Some people don't have the responsibility to be able to say, oh, I got to feed this thing. I got to give it water. I got to oh, take it outside. There's people that can't do that shit with their own kids. Mm, that, that too. You know, <laughs> and, and, yeah, you're right. Uh, it, it, mm, the but, best thing about pets it is, we can control and chickens we can have somewhat control over. But, I, I mean, I think if people are, are capable and have the desire to, to learn and responsibly take care of them, I mean, why should we limit them? Yeah, they, well, it's, it's not like it's a support animal or anything like that. A, a chicken has a viable be. use. I mean, you can eat the eggs. If mm-hmm. you, you want a chicken, you can, you know, pluck the feathers and put that thing in the pot or put it on the grill and, and not spend $14 and a it, pound for chicken wings. You that's got a two basic, of your own. That's a basic thing that people should be learning anyways. Yes. You know, it, it shouldn't be... Well, you know, this, that, or the other, because what happens when there is no stores or, you know, then you're stuck with people. Or if you have no resources to be able to go to the stores, if you don't have any money, but you know what? I've got 12 chickens out in the backyard and if they're going to lay eggs, we're going to at least have eggs for breakfast. One of them's got to go. Oh yeah. You know, it's, it's something that, that should be looked into a little bit further. Yeah. I don't think we should be slamming the door closed on, on that being able to happen. Well, and it's also not like saying, hey, you should get a bunch of people to allow them to have alligators as pets. You know, it's, <laughs> no, it's definitely you. something that's within reason that, that, that has already been a, a, a discussion, you know, open for discussion before. 
Yep. And it, seeing that right now, this was something that was discussed pre-COVID. And I think in a lot of ways that COVID changed the discussion for a lot of different things. It sure did. You know, and, and right now I'm seeing a lot of discussions about things that, that don't necessarily affect me, like STRs. Right. But then when I look at something like we can't have chickens, we're... I've been a chef for 20 years. I know how to handle you, chicken. You know how to make them chickens taste real yeah, good. I can make them make just about anything you want with the chicken. But I think that there's a lot of conversations that need to be held right now, and that's just one of them. You know, I, I wish that there's times I just sit and think, what would if what would this world be like if we were still in the 50s, mm. if we were still in the 40s, if we were still in the 1900s? I mean, obviously, COVID would have probably been a lot worse because of the advances in medicine and stuff like that. But well, I mean, we, we as can't say that because they had the plague in, in uh, 1918. Yes. You know, and they did the Spanish flu. Like, yeah, bubonic plague. But I mean, uh, do you think that some of these people would be able to survive? Kids these days, no. can they survive without know. internet or there's, a cell phone? There's old people that can't even survive nowadays because they're so addicted to technology. Yeah, listen, when I was a kid, you stepped out of line. Your mother's threatening to whoop your ass with a switch. I'm 42, today, these and my kids, mom you, will still threaten me with that shit. Today's kids, you just got to threaten to take away their damn internet. Change the yeah. internet oh, password, yeah. shut the router down, I've take watched, away their cell phone. I've watched it, each of my kids break down if the internet went out, if their phones went out. Jackson will lose his shit <laughs> if he doesn't have the Roku, the, the Xbox One. And his phone all going, they all got to be on at the same time for no reason. He could not even be doing any of them. But you know, if they're not, but on, if they're he not knows. on, he knows, you know, <laughs> he, he bugs out. And, and I think that, that that's to me is the important thing is that I don't want it to be one of the art forms that disappear. We got a lot of humanities, you know, writing books are disappearing because we have, we have the internet books that are um, written in cursive. They can't be read anyway, not yeah. by these kids. Well, and on top of that, you, you also, Arts are being redone digitally. You know, nobody's sitting down painting. I love sitting down painting rocks. That, that's my relaxation time is when I sit down. And when it brings I, a smile to piece of people's faces, I'm sure, when they find those. It does, but I never, I never put my name on the back of them. I never say, please post a picture here. Right. Rehide. Like a lot of people do that. Um, I just hide them. Like I put them all over the place. There's probably a bunch over by the aquarium still. There's a bunch on Old Fall Street that we've done. Uh, when we almost got robbed, but that's we've already went through that. Oh yeah, <laughs> but uh, Lori's got a good idea about the chickens. <clears throat> we should zone those chickens in with the STRs. That'd be awesome. I mean, that, when that you come from out of town to come visit the falls. Bring your chicken with you, <laughs> and, and we, bring your own eggs. We and and <laughs> that's a great idea because you can also create a market for that. You know, mm-hmm. the farmers market can be right downtown where. The STRs are at, and then you're selling local wares to people to come in. Right. You know, so there wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be going to waste. It'd be. Just think you if know. you, if you got a chicken farm out in the Love Canal, you could sell glow in the dark. Oh eggs. shit. That'd be terrible. You know, I actually <laughs> thought that they should put hemp out there. They should grow hemp out there. Oh man. Could you imagine the psychedelic abilities well, from that? <laughs> hemp cleans out radioactive waste. Really? Yeah. It's one of the, it's one of the plants that, that cleans that and it turns it in, into oxygen or. I don't know if it goes through the converts the, it back to something. I don't think it goes to the metamorphosis to where it, it turns into an oxygen. Yeah. But I know I was reading where it says hemp itself has been known to pull toxic waste. Look out at of that. Soil. See, there's a reason right there. We need to pitch this to our politicians and our state officials and say, look, marijuana is proven to get rid of radiation. Oh no, you don't want to smoke that shit. Well, no, but we can still say, well, you hey, don't smoke anyway. So no, no, not that stuff. I no, no. I smoke cigarettes. That's bad enough. Well, there's a movie. I don't know. I don't. Maybe Peter might know. I remember when it was when when I was younger. It was called um, Newcomb High. It was a B film, <laughs> and there was a radioactive plant next to a high school, and the kids were smoking some, and then the girl had like some kind of weird creature baby and it turned in, <laughs> and it started it was a good it was it was definitely a cheesy cheesy film it was it just, sitting beside me doing a podcast right now with me is that what you're trying to say it was terrible <laughs> it was it was a good movie for what it was i mean the premise of it was good and you know i want to i want to go back to talking about chantel over here at maloney's you know 
you've got small businesses that are starting to come back up now. Yes. We, we've got um, some money coming in from uh, the COVID relief and uh, yeah. the CARES Act and stuff like that. And, American and, Rescue Plan. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, we, we've had a thing going with that. But, uh, you know, we, we've got another small business that's, that's uh, taken a pretty good route in here. Um, I'm sure you're probably pretty familiar with them. It's called Levesque Sisters. Oh, Sisters. yeah. Yes. My, my nieces are actually uh, 14 and 12, and they're, they're, they're doing their thing over there. They, they got some pasta leos that are out of this world. I'm, I'm here to tell you, listen, I'm a critic of some food, <laughs> and I've actually won awards before for my buffalo chicken wing dip down in North well, Carolina. Well, they are giving away participation trophies, so no <laughs> easy with that. <laughs> I've, I wish because – this was at the Highland Games, and them those do not they're 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 terrible with competition. <laughs> like some of them Scottish and Irish guys, man, they don't fuck around. They don't not they don't they'll, care. They'll throw, a, they'll throw a caber up your ass. If you mess exactly. With them. <laughs> oh yeah, it was definitely a, a three hundred moment. But they they got some out of the out of this world buffalo chicken wing dip, and they make buffalo chicken wing dip pasta leos, and Everything that I've had from there to the fried Oreos, and it's just, it's, you know, it's just two sisters that are that are knocking this stuff out. And you know what? They're learning at a very young age what it takes to start a business, what it takes yeah. to keep a business going. And you know what? you got to give their parents kudos. Well, their, their mother is the founder of um, Speak Up and Live Incorporated, which is a, uh, a domestic violence, child abuse, child molestation group. And they did a lot of things down at Gill Creek. You know, they, they raised awareness. The, the the girls have been on the paper a couple of times holding up their signs and selling bracelets and stuff like that. So they definitely get it from that. Now the father, which is my cousin, my we grew up in the same house. We grew up like brothers, is a phenomenal, phenomenal artist. Um, we actually have a picture of Marilyn Monroe in our living room that he did. And he has this awesome Tesla picture that I'm probably going to end up buying. <laughs> but that's where they get it from. And their brother, uh, Nick, just started a you know, home he does the home care line. Yeah, he does, he does like the small home repairs and, and, and landscaping. Yeah, painting and stuff like that. And that that the five of them have the same. They feed off of each other when it comes to business. They have a good work ethic. And, yeah, and that's exactly how the parents are. And I'm here to tell you, since we've been little kids, my cousin Nick has been tight as a damn. You could shove a, a piece of coal up his butt and you get a diamond in two weeks. <laughs> I've seen him save the same hundred dollar bill for an entire year from one birthday to the next. Well, you know, we need to get your cousin to come in here because we've got some murals down there across from uh, across from the train station. And, uh, you know, I, I know they had had a couple of different artists go in there, and I know one person, one local artist, was, was kind of upset because he wanted to go down there and paint something. They wouldn't yeah. let him. Um, Ken Constantino, he wanted yeah. to go down and paint a mural, and for some reason he wasn't allowed to. Um, I don't know if it's because of, you know, Personal, political. It's I, very possible. Ken, Ken and the mayor had, <coughs> didn't have the greatest relationship when the mayor was running. Yeah, well. Which caused me and Ken not to have a great relationship while the mayor was running. But I know he has um, he has some some very strong native ties. I know he yes. does the water drive yes. for the reservation and stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm just wondering. We've got, you know, we know that over here at Goat Island, that's a, a, a sacred native land. Well, this entire land. area is. I, and I believe at one point, Grand Island was supposed to revert back to them. Yes. When, um, you know, when I first moved here, I was looking to buy a house on Grand Island, and they were threatening to take Grand yeah. Island back. And that's when they, they made the deal with the, uh, the casino mm -hmm. down here. Yeah. That was part of the deal. But, you know, that is obviously a part of the heritage of this area as well. Right. Why don't we have anything to do with? Na I mean, we've got the turtle down here downtown. That's, well, and that's even that, that's moth. Yeah, it's close. That's, I mean, why don't what do you we call have, it hurricane ready? Yeah, that's what I call hurricane proof. Hur hurricane ready, yeah. hurricane proof. Which uh, you know what? Yesterday, I swear I heard a lion roar when Noah's Ark went floating through my parking lot at work. We were just. We were flooded over there. Well, but that's, anyway, that's because you didn't go get a, a sub from Maloney's. No, if I'd have got a sub from Maloney's. You, you wouldn't know, have heard that line in your belly rumble. No, that's what it was. I wouldn't have. I'd have been too busy wolfing that <laughs> sub down. But, I mean, we, we have, you know, native heritage around here. I we mean, do. We've got Seneca Casino. We've got the, the Tuscarora well, Reservation. This, that's this so entire close. area is big, big Six Nations. You know, my grandmother was born on the Tainadega Mohawk Reservation in Kingston, Ontario. So this whole area, all the way, Hamburg, 
it was all native land at one point in time. And well, the whole country was native land at one point well, in time, obviously. But yeah, I but mean, if you go if you go back to the to the to the paleo paleo Indians and stuff like that came over the land bridge, we there was always migration. No land belongs to anybody. That, that, that we belong to this land. When we die, we, we go back to the land. Right. You know, and that's the way I look at it. I've never looked at it as land as ownership acceptable. You know, we say that we own this land, and we we really don't because at any we're point in time. We're just borrowing it right now. Well, even then, if an asteroid hits, we're not borrowing. We, we never existed. <laughs> no. You know, so. <laughs> but. You know, it doesn't make I, any sense, though, why we don't have anything to do. And that's I, what we were talking about before we started as far as. I, I, I think I posted a picture on my Facebook page not that long ago that I was going to ask my landlord. Or I wonder if my landlord would get mad if I painted this picture of the Maid of the Mist. And, um on the side of the building because I firmly believe that we, we don't have anything like you can go onto the, you can go onto the casino property and they, they have the totems, the, you know, the, the, right. the, the, our animal signs. Like I said, my, my family's sign was turtle. The turtle clan. Um, and you could see that all over there, but outside of that area, there's nothing. We got that dumbass statue where the, the big statue with the waterfalls on old fall street. None of that stuff has any connection to the people here. no, you know, and, and, and it's not like we're at a lack of people that come from here, you know, that, that are world-renowned people that, I mean, shit, I would be happy if we had a big statue of Rashad Evans <laughs> standing on the Grand Island Bridge like this. Like Rocky. Because he's from here. Right. And he's a tangible, connectable person. Um, or, or the Maid of the Mist, or Tesla, or uh, Nathaniel Dietz, which is a, a, a famous gospel composer, or... Uh, Sal uh, Magnolia. Sal Magli. That, I was. I, I think I'm <laughs> still Magnolia. That's what it is. I'm thinking of a movie. Well, we do have. We also have a, a very good lacrosse player here. I don't know how many people know her. She was actually running for city council. A Amber years Hill. Ago. Yeah. Amber Hill. She's. Uh, she plays for the. I don't want to say it wrong, but I believe it's the Houdnessy. Listen, tribe. Amber. And, Amber's a damn bully. Uh, Amber. A little intimidating, she is. But Amber has a heart of gold as well, and I felt bad with you know she didn't actually get to run in the election. On the well, that council. that whole thing was screwed up, and that that actually happens a lot around here. It does. It was a learning experience. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. <laughs> it I've was been mad lesson. as fuck. I learned over, over but, that one. Yeah. But you know she she played for Syracuse. I mean she played college mm-hmm. lacrosse and and I know she referees and I know she's raising her daughter to play yeah. lacrosse and I mean lacrosse is a now, Jordan Jordan's good too. Jordan Jordan's always got every time I see Amber post a picture she's doing something lacrossey. That's not Jordan. That's Din Vicious. <laughs> Let's make sure we get that right because she's just about as intimidating as a mother. So well, and then that's an important thing, especially growing up here. Yeah, you know, and and. Uh, that's that's one thing I, I can say about the women in this city is that you like I said before, even the short ones, you know, <laughs> they it's just they're they're a different breed. Absolutely, you know, like we're they're raised differently. They're they're cast from a different mold, and it's important for the the women. And and I catch flack for it. My daughters say, "Dad, that's real sexist." But in a lot of ways, I think that that we have to teach these young women on how to be. How to be independent, independent strong and women. tough, and yes. you know, don't it, be a victim of your environment. Exactly, You'd be and able to handle yourself. There's one thing that I can't stand is somebody that victim, victimizes themselves out of out of circumstance, happenstance, not circumstance, happenstance. Yeah, you know, uh, and and you don't see that with a lot of. I mean, you see it with some, but you don't see it with with the people that I I affiliate with, the women that I that I hang around. You never see none of them victimizing themselves. No, if, if something happens to a woman. It's within reason. They brush that shit off and, and wake up the next morning and go right back. Got to still got people to piss and off she's and one of them, to live. She's one of them people. You know, Amber's one of them people. I mean, she's I, she's very. I mean, she's very well known in the women's lacrosse world. Well, she's she's, not, she's MMA too. She she well, practices. she's training. In, yes, she's training in uh, martial arts. I believe it's. Um, yeah, I, 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 Brazilian I'll Jiu-Jitsu, fight you, Amber. Well, we can we can go one on one. I'm sorry, dude, but I'm putting my money on Amber on that one. I think yeah, she's of course. That'd be, the smart, that'd be smart money. <laughs> I just want to see if she could choke me out real quick. But I mean, know? but I mean, we have we have traditional native game, the we lacrosse, do. and you know, at the ice rink over at Hyde Park, they oh. actually do take the one ice rink down during the summertime. Yeah, and they they do have box, box lacrosse in there. And let me tell you, I went to a few games in there. 
And I give kudos to those guys because between getting smacked with the ball, smacked with the stick, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I would probably just have a bed set up in That's the th- penalty box. because well, There's that game. <laughs> that and rugby yes. are rough games. Now, oh. Jazz, Jasmine just started lacrosse. She got all of her stick and her plates and whatnot. And because I didn't have enough kids playing junior varsity, she couldn't play this season. So she's going to go out next season. She wants to play. It's, it's, it's definitely something that uh, is a sport that takes heart. It's not like, you know, discipline. It takes golf. a lot of discipline to control your temper when somebody whacks you with a stick. Or baseball, because you know, obviously, <laughs> anybody that likes the Yankees, Mister Archie, uh, <laughs> doesn't know anything about football. But yeah, you're a Raiders fan, so that's, yeah, he's that's a Raiders funny. fan. But <laughs> <laughs> one thing that I did notice that, that really excited me this week, and we got about eight minutes left, so I'm just going to shoot back and forth with the bull. Let it rip. Um, Rapids got a new promoter. Yes. Anita West. Anita West. Now, I'm not sure if she used to VJ or DJ with 97 she Rock. She was a DJ. Was she a DJ with 97 yes. Rock? Um, and the ad, the, the, the didn't editorial she spend some time at 106.5? I believe, I, I believe so. Yes. I believe so. I'm pretty sure she and did. It said that they were bringing back the blues. The blues. Now, I'm here to tell you, I absolutely love the blues. Anything from John Lee Hooker to Stevie Ray Vaughan, old Eric Clapton, B.B. King, Niagara Falls is a blues city. You know, going back to losing the Festival of Lights, we also lost the Blues Festival. We did. And that'd be nice to have them both together. Absolutely. It would be nice to have even one of those back. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, do we even have the Italian Festival anymore now on Pine Avenue? No, we don't. I don't think we have. Well, I... COVID, COVID messed up a lot of things. Last year was a bust, okay. And, and we're going to get to the point where we start, because it is Friday, and we, we want to start giving you guys the weekend A little events. rundown of events that are, that yeah. are going to happen. You know, we say there's nothing to do around here, and there actually is a lot to do. And one of the things we want to do is we want to make people aware of things that are happening. Well, you said tomorrow there's a barbecue chicken dinner at That's 1 o'clock. on uh, Sunday, the uh, Sunday. Pine Avenue Business Association mm-hmm. – um, I bought tickets from one of the members, Mr. John Queso. Um, I don't know if they're selling tickets on site or not. That's something that would have to be looked into. But it's at uh, seven fifty five in the marketplace, the restaurant seven fifty five. Um, twelve dollars. So you've had a chicken barbecue. It is a fundraiser a for Pine Avenue Business Association. Mm-hmm. That's Sunday from one to five. Uh, there was a the the SPCA car show they had the yes I that, did that see that was uh, that was actually canceled because the threat of weather severe weather coming through tomorrow so in uh, abundance of caution they went ahead and canceled that um, what else do we got here there was some other things that are happening this weekend um, Friday night oh t- Friday night is uh, Labor Night at the races at Ransomville Speedway. Niagara Orleans Labor Council. They uh, sponsor the the races out at the dirt track in Ransomville. Uh, that's going on. We were going to actually have Mr. Jim Perry here, and yes. um, he actually went out there for uh, Labor Night at the races because he was also a union member as well. well. So he went to he went to Labor Night at the races. Um, I know this weekend they got the big car show in Syracuse. Yeah, uh, the Syracuse Nationals. I've gone to that last year. They canceled it uh, the two years prior to that. I went there and. Uh, you, you want to go to a car show? That is one hell of a car show. We had a uh, one of those uh, tracker outdoor? thingies to tell you. So there's several buildings there. It's at the state fairgrounds in oh, Syracuse. Okay. But we had one of those fitness trackers on the the last year that we went, which was the year before last year. The, this uh, this Chunkendales member here just uh, we walked eight miles there just to go around to look at all the cars. And let me tell you something. I still don't think we saw all those cars. Well, there's another one over here. It looks like at Eastern Hills Mall on the 25th as well. There's another car. Yeah, show. There, there was uh, – is that the KMR one? I believe so. Yeah, for the KI Road March, I believe that yeah. one is. No, this is uh, Western New York Cars and Coffee. Okay. Well, I know yeah. we got um, – on Fridays now, they're, they're back out to the Summit Park Mall. What, they're actually doing a car show in the parking lot on Fridays now. No burnout pit. And well, that's exactly what this says, the too. edge is, is not there. They're just, it's, uh, I believe, Steve Barnes, right, from yeah. Western New York Classics yep. put yep. it on. Yep. Um, that's going on out at Summit Park Mall again, like I said. Unfortunately, no burnout pit. But um, the, the information I was reading, they're taking classic cars, new cars, uh, trucks, motorcycles. You could bring it all out there. They were having separate areas to set everything up. I believe they were having food vendors out there as well. They were supposed to have food trucks, I think. Um, I don't know if they're having a band or not. 
But uh, we also have one coming up on August 15th. We got Summerfest at the Sal. Yes, so Summerfest is coming uh, back. Fireman's Toy Fund, uh, Kenny Tompkins, and uh, myself, I help out with that quite a bit. We're going to be doing that on the August the 15th at Sal Magley Stadium. Uh, Kenny's still working on getting all the list of bands together. But well, uh, we, we've been growing. I think last year we had close to 200 cars or maybe a little Kenny over 200 cars. Kenny needs to start letting me help out with a few of these things that he undertakes. Well, you are more than welcome because, you know, something we'll take all the volunteer help we can get because yeah. it's it's something that's it's something that we, we've put together not only to benefit the toy fund for the firemen, but it's also another event to well, get people out. There's also other things that have been taken away due to COVID yes. because of, well, because of COVID, I just said that, but... Kind of like um, we used to do a women and children's hospital jamboree at the at the at the American Legion on Niagara Avenue, mm-hmm. and we've not been able to do it, and they're probably not going to do it again this year or next year. But um, that is something that every year I remember growing up, the Legion used to do a toy drive for the firefighters, and that when they do the Summerfest, that's always a fun time. Because there's multiple vendors, multiple cars, multiple bands. And Kenny puts his heart. Between that and, and the Memorial Day Parade, well, that the man. Memorial, the Memorial Day Parade, he's, uh, he's actually turned stepped, that over. Kristen, yeah, he stepped away Kristen from Mulder from KIA, Ro- KIA okay. Road March is actually taking that over. Kenny's still obviously involved, involved as well yeah. as myself. But uh, I think Kristen's pretty much you know, taking over a lot of the organization on that. Um, Lori Pello just sent us a message, said that there's a limited amount of tickets that will be sold on site on Sunday. So if you want to go down to 755 in the marketplace, get yourself a Chevetta's chicken dinner for $12 to benefit the the uh, Pine Avenue Business Association. Looks like you probably better get there early before early. they sell out of tickets. I know I picked up my four tickets today. Well, so. I don't like that kind of chicken. <laughs> Uh, but you know what? It's a fundraiser. Well, yeah. it, it, it's the purpose of the. I understand it's the purpose of the fundraiser, but I'm a fat guy, dude. I'm not going to eat four chicken dinners <laughs> myself. All right, I, I got to tell you right now. But it's a fundraiser. It's something for yeah, the community. You get is. behind that. Yeah, you, you, whether you, you like it, it or you not, got, you got to be behind it because if you're not behind it, then you shouldn't be complaining about the shit that happens. No, you should. That's not. like what Dante put two council meetings ago. If you're not at the council meeting, stop complaining about public, right. you know, what they what they do in the council Just meeting. like you don't go out you and vote, my, don't bitch about the people that are in office. Well, you saw my fat ass at the last council meeting because Dante said that. <laughs> I wasn't about to let D say nothing like that and me not show up and, and not be able to talk on Facebook. And you had a tie on there as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, mean, I kind of like to wear this kind of stuff. It makes me look a little more professional. Well, it's... it's well. A <laughs> little mind. more, a little more professional. Let's it, it stress the word little there, but it's all little. good. <laughs> hey, I've not cussed all that much. I think I'm doing pretty you, good on you've, that. You've been pretty good. The swear jars is running a little low this week. <laughs> Thank but the it's Lord. okay. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> um, got one minute left. You got any, any words of wisdom to unleash? Um, well, Lori just sent me another message. She said it just said it was a chicken dinner. She's not aware if it's Chevetta's. So don't quote me on that being a Chevetta's Lori, chicken. Tell them we don't want that Chevetta's bullshit in no. our chicken. We, it's a chicken dinner. Just regardless. give me the chicken. I'll make mine and Lori's myself. We, um, we got it on our own. Oh, words of wisdom. Let's see. You know, that I have a saying. <clears throat> I used to tell my kids all the time, and uh, it still holds true to this day. And, uh, you know, they, they'd fall and scrape Peter, their knee. Or Peter's something. flocking around in there. And uh, <laughs> I would always tell them, you know, they'd be crying. and be like, you know what? It'll quit hurting before you get married. Because yeah. then you get a whole new kind of pain. Oh, man. <laughs> that, My kids, when I started saying that, they would start quoting me. That definitely and maybe, That was a proud dad moment right there. I was like, yes. I'm always hitting the kids with some kind of quotes that, that keep them through life. You know, like. You can, you can ask Jackson what the motto is any day of the week and tell you knowledge is power. Um, that is 100% true. There's always quotes, though, that, that tickle me that have more impact than the most philosophically thought out wording. You know, and I, I totally forgot where I was going with that. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's a senior moment. Get the Jared Hall ready. Wow, yes, definitely. Um well, I do want to. I do want to make an announcement too. Um, my uh, my daughter Gabrielle, she had a granddaughter for me uh, two weeks ago. Today, as a matter of fact, it was July the second, and um, 
I'm happy to report that everything appears to be healthy, normal. She's doing very well, baby and mother both. Um, I do have another granddaughter on the way that's supposed to be here in August. Nice. I'm going to be taking a trip down to Florida for her birth because um, I drove to North. Well, I flew to North Carolina when my grandson was born, and I'm mm. going to f- probably going to drive to Florida for this one. I don't. I don't know about the whole flying thing with COVID and oh. all the restrictions and stuff like that. So I think I'm going to drive this one down to Florida and um, go down so I can see. That'll actually be grandchild number five for me. I have. That that'll be the fourth one. That's that's why I unfortunately had one that passed away after five weeks. But mm-hmm. um, I do have three that I that are still now, and I'm gonna have a fourth one that's gonna be uh, Papa's wingman. Congratulations! <laughs> Congratulations! We're, uh, we're, we're grandkids are told that grandkids hit differently than, than regular yes, kids. They do because you can you spoil send their asses, asses and send them home. Yep, <laughs> send them back. You want some shirt? You want that candy bar? Hell yes! Hype <laughs> them up on Red Bull and then send them back home. Mommy and Daddy said no. Oh no! Papa says yeah. Come on over here. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> My granddaughter comes over and she'll say, "Papa, snack." Have a snack, and we go right to the kitchen. We get it right in and get our fruit snacks out. That's, that's Aries all day long. <laughs> Holy shit, that kid will eat fruit snacks. Gummy, daddy, gummy, daddy, daddy, gummy. I'm like, dude, you just had three packages. Calm down. But there's still five left in the box. <laughs> and he'll but, want them, too. He'll, he'll, he'll find a way to get them shit. That, that kid, my youngest is persistent. <laughs> my youngest is just like, I can see him. He, he's... A two-year, forty-year-old version of me. Oh, is exactly no. what he is. We are in trouble. Fat, and <laughs> he takes doesn't take no for an answer. Is his biggest problem. Well, that's good. Um, one big thing that I wanted to bring up before we wrapped is on the twentieth, on July twentieth, we have that skydive. Yes. And the mayor touched on that at the end, and I was I wanted to point that out. Um, I'm going to hopefully be down there to, to record that, so you can check that out on the page when it comes on. I'm just if not, I'm going to steal it the, from Rob. I'm just going down to check out the Italian supermodel that's coming in. Yeah, that, that ought to be interesting. Um, I'm not going to say all that, because Melissa's <laughs> probably watching. <laughs> well, that's right, I'll say it. that model, too. That's right. We, we'll get but, down there. <laughs> we got we to gotta get Rob to get in a super zoom on that when she's coming down. Yeah, Rob, Rob, Rob and Shamar are some talented talent you probably see shamar out there with the drone yep floating right next to her they're they're two of my favorite photographers from the area and i really wish i can get them on here because i asked them and they kind of just swerved my message it's okay <laughs> though it's okay i'll make some memes with you bitches but <laughs> uh, don't, um, don't get him with the memes come on mr vicious <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and leave you some some a quote Words have no power to impress the mind without the exquisite horror of the of the reality of them words of the reality. Let me read that again because obviously <laughs> you butchered I it. butchered that up. <laughs> words have no power to impress the mind without the exquisite horror of the reality. That's that's, that's pretty deep. It is. It's, it's that's pretty pretty. I seen it when I was leaving the house, and I said I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and read that today because it. it it reminds me of politics, and if you listen to what these people are saying and you're not paying attention to the reality of what they're saying, they're going to tickle you, and you're going to fall for that shit. But keep that in mind. You can look past what they're saying and, and go to the reality of what their words mean. Hopefully next week we'll have Kenny on. We should. We better. <laughs> he better. He better. <laughs> I will go to we his house. the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also reading this book. It's called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. If you guys want to join my book club that I'm not starting, <laughs> you're more than welcome Fill to. Fill out the application that don't exist on your yeah, website. Yeah, go ahead and <laughs> That send, doesn't exist. Send that to, to <laughs> nobody's going to read that shit anyways. <laughs> Care of Peter Green at Niagara Vox. <laughs> um, but yeah, if anybody wants to go out and read it, and you know, we can probably shoot it back and forth. It's a very interesting book. I'm also reading The Animal Farm by George Orwell. You live on the animal farm. I do. I do. It, well, if you read this book, you would you would definitely understand. How I did you, read that book. That, that book one, is good. That was standard reading when I was in school. If you want to, I, I got like the third or fourth page in and messaged Peter, and it was just today that I started it. And I was like, "Have you ever read this book?" And Peter was like, "Yeah, it's an excellent book. Brilliant." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, this book is creepy." And he says, "Yeah, Boxer is my favorite." I'm like, "I didn't even get that that far yet." <laughs> what the hell's Boxer? <laughs> like, you just kind of spoiled the whole book for me. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> Fired. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. 
Tim, have, have Peter, a good weekend, everybody. Yeah, have a wonderful week, and thank you very much. See you next Friday. See you next Friday. Oh!